What's the psychology of why those billionaires felt the urge to explore the depths of Titanic in what was clearly a doomed submersible, controlled by only one button? We only have one button, that's it. And a knockoff wireless PlayStation controller? We run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! With Bluetooth connectivity issues? This line is shit. It barely function, and especially the wireless never wants to connect. In psychology, this is called having so much money and not knowing what to do with it syndrome. Okay, it's not actually named that. But this is popularly called affluenza or wealth fatigue. This term refers to those who have a sense of emptiness, dissatisfaction, or a lack of greater purpose, which is experienced by some who have achieved significant wealth or material possessions. It stems from the idea that the pursuit of material wealth as a primary goal in life can lead to disillusionment and a loss of meaning and fulfillment. This causes them to sometimes seek to fulfill those lofty childhood dreams of pursuing those expensive adventures now as adults. This may be becoming an astronaut for 10 minutes with Jeff Bezos. Hiring local Sherpas to basically carry them up to the summit of Mount Everest, racing Ferraris on Formula One racetracks, or now exploring the depths of Titanic even though their submersible only had one tiny poorly designed window. Therefore, they really couldn't even see Titanic in person, but mostly just on the computer screen in the sub. Control screen here, our sonar screen here, and we can put any image we want in the back. The seating configuration in practice. Passengers on the floor barefoot. Squeeze into Titan for each dive and view the wreckage on these monitors. Those who do these risky adventures may tell you it's for the thrill of the adventure, to test their physical and mental limits, to push the limits of humanity. But it seems to also involve what's called social comparison to possibly brag to their fellow wealthy friends about what they did and still can do in spite of being old and rich. Wealth fatigue may set in when they suddenly realize that everyone they know and respect can buy everything that they can also buy. So they may think of ways to set themselves apart to subconsciously prove their superiority and stroke their typically large egos, which may result in them rushing into doing these typically risky and expensive adventures. Experimental submersible vessel that has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. We can use these off-the-shelf components. I got these from Camper World. Camp for less at Camping World. Has some elements of macgyver -y. I don't know if I'd use that description of it. Pressure vessel is not macgyver at all because that's where we work with Boeing and NASA and the University of Washington. The University of Washington telling ABC News they were not involved in the design, engineering, or testing of the Titan. NASA saying they were consulted but did not conduct testing and manufacturing via its workforce or facilities. That's where we work with Boeing and NASA and the University of Washington. 2018 letter. Members of a committee specializing in submersibles expressed unanimous concern about the sub's safety. I really hope they're all found safe, but many believe their doomed submersible imploded on their way down, causing it to be crushed like a soda can, where it's possible their little window gave out due to the sea pressure. It's acrylic, plexiglass. Wow. Yeah, and it is uh, seven inches thick. It weighs about 80 pounds. And when we go to the Titanic, it will squeeze in about three quarters of an inch. It just deforms it. Just deforms it. Acrylic's great because it squeezes in and before it cracks or fails, it starts to, to crackle. Crackle. And so you get a huge warning if it's going to fail. As I recall, the viewport was not rated for that kind of depth. The manufacturer said this in delivering it. I believe it's pretty much invulnerable. And that's pretty much what they said about the Titanic. That's right. Or there was a faulty bolt in their removable door. There are hopeful reports of knocking being heard, but some are skeptical that's them, especially with all the boats and machinery in that area now that could be creating that type of man-made sound. If you want to go forward, you press forward. If you want to go back, you go back, turn left, turn right, go down, go up and it's Bluetooth, so I can hand it to anybody. Also, if knockoff wireless PlayStation controllers were so amazing and reliable, why doesn't Boeing, Airbus, SpaceX, and NASA use them to control their passenger aircraft? Even reviews of this controller say that disconnects at just a few feet. Keep in mind, this is for gaming. This is not for piloting a life-saving sub. I think he needed more than one button after all. First thing we do? One button. It should be an elevator. It should not be an exercise in buttons and switches and stuff. Now in the comments, what do you think sadly happened to them? Let everyone know in the comments below. Subscribe for more.